Welcome to Laguna Seca in this week's GT2 race. As you can see, this lobby is heavily populated by three cars. One of them obviously being me, and I have chosen to go with the good old trusty BMW. Now the biggest question of all time is where on earth is everyone? But we'll get onto that in a moment. Let's get on with this race. As you can see, there was clearly no point in qualifying. So I have been given the good old trust position of P2. Starting off, we do have the GT40 to our left and the Dodge Viper behind. Dodge Viper has an absolutely great start off the line. It is a medium length race, so I've gone for the hard tyres. And it's going to be the old waiting game, really, as the two, these two sorry, have a little bit of a moment. And I'm following up behind. Again, it is a 16 minute race, roughly about that. So I'm not in the rush to absolutely send it right now. As some of you may be aware, the pit exit at Laguna Seca has been changed. So it is a very, very long pit. I have done a video before where you can actually do this race with zero stops. And that is my idea for this race today. To the who the whole race and not stop. It's, I think it's actually, it do benefit really by not stopping on how long it takes to pit. So I think pitting now almost takes about 50 seconds, 40 to 50 seconds, give or take. So unless you are losing a substantial amount of time at the latter end of the race, you really are better off by not pitting and just suffering on the absolute destroyed tires. But that is my strategy for today, guys, as I do reclaim position two and then quickly lose it. But then the Dodge Viper goes sand castle building and I get it back again. Break into this corner now very late. I was more cautious of what the Dodge Viper was doing and making sure there was no contact. Contact was clearly still made, but uh, yeah. Now it's just time to claw back the GT40. We're heading back to what this video is more about is where is everyone? It's, it's so hard now thing is we are now 11 months from release of this game and as you all know the release of this game wasn't received the best it had many issues many problems many bugs and not a lot of things in the game which did alienate a lot of new players as well as alienated a lot of the older players to a certain extent so yes that is a lot of the player base missing there with each passing update promising new things people did come back a certain percentage of them so let's say 80 percent of that people came back to check out what this update brought were disappointed or frustrated again with the newer bugs or existing bugs still being there or whatever that then alienated them further again now with 11 months worth of updates, we actually have a game, what it should have been like when it released. But the people we've alienated along the way for the past 11 months are just not returning. They found new things or they're trying out different games or just not trusting the game in itself or the developers. There are still bugs, we all know that. There are still very prominent bugs such as replays still only recording for 20 minutes. I mean, we're 11 months into release. Replays should actually work, uh, along with disconnections. Um, I think you're getting, I'm getting more disconnections now than I did at release, along with other things like that. But it is much better than what it was before. But again, these little things is what frustrates the whole population overall. Now, mix that with creating new and more lobbies you're spreading out the remaining player base much much thinner than what it was before i also have a feeling now you may disagree with this that we have also far more tracks to choose from which does alienate some people to an extent because waiting three hours for a track rotation is way too long while also people are just bouncing around lobbies, choosing a track that they like. If the race doesn't work out, they'll just quit and go into another race that's coming up in, in a moment. Which then creates the unusual habit of the quitting during the endurance series and things like that. When the first three minutes of the race doesn't go the way you like it, people just quit. Which again frustrates people that are staying 
but it's also frustrating the people that are quitting because they're fed up of being roundabout or going off track, things like that. It is a weird circle everybody is in at the moment. And I, today, as you can see, only have three of us in the race. I jumped in and out of lobbies left, right and centre to try to, for this race here to find um, a lobby with more than just myself in it. And surprisingly for GT2 spec series, there was only three. So it really was a weird time. And I didn't do this like on a Monday morning at 8 a.m. This is Sunday afternoon. You know, it's, it is really weird. You know, I've never had a race this dead before. I know many of you have said down in the comments below, where, how are you finding this population? Where are you finding these drivers? Things like that. I've had many messages questioning me where on earth is everybody and I'm sitting there going um, I don't obviously have a problem but this week I clearly did with just me here the big question I would like to ask all of you though is do you believe Forza Motorsport is dying or is it dead is it too late to resurrect we're coming up to 12 months since release and yes it is better than release yes it is a bit better with the bugs uh, they're not as prominent but it's still a long way i believe than what it could be especially drip feeding the tracks once every two months you know i think we, we really need a like a map drop or track drop where we have five or six tracks dropped at one go because having one track every two weeks uh, every two months sorry is way too long the same with the splitting up of GT races. So we've got GT2, 3 and 4. They're, I think they could have also implemented the cars better and implemented some new cars as well. Same with the Touring Car Series. I think Touring Car Series could do with some new cars as well. As well as a rebalance of the cars themselves that's already in it. We all know the Audi is quite dominant in all the races. And the Peugeot, for example, is one of the slowest cars on our races. But if you put them side by side to each other or a race with each other, the, the difference is huge. It's not a little bit. And the Nerf DMG, okay, it was a bit quick. But the MG did have its drawbacks. And I've driven the Audi and I can't seem to figure out where the drawbacks of the Audi are. So let me know down in the comments below if you know what are some of the drawbacks of driving the Audi compared to the other touring cars. You know, the Peugeot has got the great handling on its side, same as the Vauxhall but it doesn't have any go in it so it doesn't do good in a straight line you know things like that and um, the Lavorg, for example is incredibly good in tires and it's also had a buff so it's incredibly good in tires and now actually quite quick so i think everything is just gone so out of whack and nobody's addressing the problem Again, let me know down in the comments below what you think about what I'm saying here. You could totally disagree with me. That is perfectly fine. Everybody is entitled to opinion. I'm just throwing out ideas on what the problems are. And I think lacking a huge amount of new content, as well as not really addressing the bugs, is creating kind of its own problems in itself. I know Turn 10 recently released a community post stating their roadmap for the next few months, you know, telling us we're getting two new tracks over the next four months along with other bit bug fixes drifting and things like that again we are almost 12 months from release so the last remaining population are us hardcore people that have stuck with it smiled all the way through got frustrated picked ourselves back up and carried on again but the alienated new customers won't come back very little might maybe five percent of them as well as other people may come back now and again try it out and go do you know i'm still not happy with it and they have one frustrating moment and we just uninstall the game again which is a huge shame and you know what funny enough one of those frustrating moments could be just a penalty that's been wrongly issued and they just go do you know what the history fix the game stuff it and not go back to it again which is again another huge shame because this game is an absolute blast again everybody's entitled to opinion you might not agree with me you might not enjoy this game to me i think it's incredible to you guys watching i'm 90 percent sure that you all think this game is absolutely incredible i also think they are starting to bring back team ace and realizing their mistakes thus 
readdressing the situation and making this game what it should have been and if anything gonna make it better than some of the competition out there again I'm just guessing here it might not even be better than the competition but I think it's in a very good position as it is right now and it'd be great to see some new people coming back yes there are frustrating moments there's frustrating moments in any game out there you play Call of Duty you could have a match where you're one minute dominating next minute so you're absolutely getting railed you know it's part of online play and things like that nothing goes the way you want it to go sometimes there's plenty of videos you've guys seen me one minute i am winning the races next minute i'm being battered off the track but like nobody's business and it's just part of online play and you've just got to keep smiling at the situation and talking about smiling at the situation you see my tires are getting quite worn we are starting our lap eight and i am surprised that everybody else in the race is following me and choosing not to pit as well and you know they were saying follow what the leader is doing <laughs> well they are doing exactly the same although we do have quite a large gap from the cars behind and whilst we do have this moment i'd like to take a moment out to thank our channel members which is andy good jeff anderson dmc motorsport sigmatic daniel adams john Burnson, ak47 thank you guys for supporting the channel and if you are enjoying what you're seeing here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and come and join us for more stuff. And I also have a Discord, link is in the bottom of the description. Come hang out with all of us and the community and let's all have a great time. Anyway, going back to how Forza and the condition is in, let me know down in the comments below one way you think Turn 10 could change one thing and make a massive improvement. For me, it'll have to be something absolutely crazy and a bit more personal and a bit more fun. So, for example, at certain tracks, they have little Easter eggs hidden somewhere. You know, like you turn left there at that junction there and it says you've turned the wrong way or this is not a pit entrance. You know, little things like that. Just something that's a little bit fun. I mean, certainly something more fun than what I've just suggested. But, you know, old school funniness and little easter eggs here and there just to make things more personal as well for us as well as for the developers just to hide little funny things in there you know like an odd tree sticking out saying i was planted by mistake you know someone completely daft you know and just little cookies here and there little touches like that make a huge difference because you know thoughts gone into things like that you know uh, that's just me just spitballing stupid ideas out we are on a lap nine tires are wearing quite thin we are on minor wear right now and everybody else behind has also chosen not to pit so they really are following my strategy right now and chooses not to pit i'm going to be so shocked at what their tire wear is going to be like because they must also be cut and surprisingly the pack is spread quite far out so the gt40 i believe is 4.2 seconds away whilst the dodge viper is 12 seconds away so we are all on our own little pack right now i am still curious though who is going to brave the pit for the last few laps because someone's going to have to pit unless they're going to be able to control the car all the way to the end i know the final lap is going to be pretty tough especially in this car but to be fair the bmw is one of the more stable cars to drive I haven't driven a Dodge Viper yet. It does sound absolutely brilliant, but I have not had a little go in that one yet, so I don't know how stable it is. And the GT40, last time I drove that was a release of this game, and I did not like it. Um, but back then also, I didn't know anything about tuning and things like that, so I was pretty um, new to the game, shall we say. So the experience in the GT40 may not represent what a good tune could do to the gt40 i should really go back to it but the gt40 didn't even sound that good either you know it's a v6 turbo uh, you know it's not a v8 <laughs> you know it doesn't sound as good no matter what you do it certainly ever isn't ever going to sound as good as a good old v8 anyway blimp is up in the sky giving a good view to everybody of where we are right now 6.5 seconds away we're actually making quite a lot of time away from the cars behind we are on moderate wear, sorry, on the right and tyres. So their tyres must be absolutely goosed as well. We have managed to gain another three seconds from them. 
with only two laps to go. Well, one and a half laps to go, really. Clearly no point in pitting now. And I'm curious to see whether anyone else is in a, such a poor tyre state. They're going to have no choice but to pit to make it through that last lap. It would be so interesting to see. And I just love it. Do you know when you're racing and everybody's like, do you know what, I'm going to follow exactly what the leader's doing because clearly the leader knows what they're doing and I'm being followed by these two poor souls who's following my no pit strategy. And because I'm on a wheel and things like that, it is a bit easier for me per se. Oh, there we go. I do believe that's a Dodge Viper has entered the pit. Their tyres must have been absolutely wrecked. I mean, we're on our last lap now. All, all our tyres are on moderate wear. It is awful to drive. And you do lose so much time. I mean, let's come around this corner now. We should have a marker to tell us how far off pace we are. Two seconds already. And we're not even a quarter way through the lap. You know, that's incredible amount of time to lose. But in retrospect of how long it takes to pit, you are far better off doing this way around than you are just pitting. It, it's mental. Um, don't get me wrong, I like the way that... Ooh, getting close to the, uh, the limits there. But I like the way the new pit is, but you really have to be on a long race to justify entering that pit. It's so long. Nothing beats Yas Marina though. I timed that one. It was almost one minute from entrance to exit of that pit. That pit takes forever. Oh my gosh. Anyway, it would also be great to let me know down in the comments below what tracks would you love to see? Name five tracks that you would love to have in a map drop or track drop. Five tracks that are missing from here that you would also love to see. But as we're coming to the end of this race now, we have got P1 position. 18 seconds away from p2 and over 60 seconds away from p3 thank you all for watching see you all next time goodbye